Okay. Usually it's a piece of equipment. <clears throat> Today it's a robot vacuum. Welcome everybody. We are coming to you today from Cambridge, Maryland. We just got in last night. We flew into DC, hung out in DC yesterday. I went to the National Herb Garden, which was just remarkable. Here to talk about the industry workforce film. Hello. Should we do our intro elsewhere? Sorry for the noise. There's a robot vacuum over there. There's people down below there, the restaurant. Just focus here on what I'm saying. We're here at Cambridge, Maryland with PACA, the Pennsylvania Aggregate and Concrete Association. They meet every year to talk about the state of the industry, talk about what's going on in each other's businesses, play some golf, hang out, bring their families together. It's a great time. Uh, they reach out to me to talk about workforce development and what the heck Build It is up to. So we flew in from DC or into DC last night. We got some blue crab, which was just spectacular. Ended up here, we're on Chesapeake Bay right now. The place is freaking beautiful. And yeah, we're gonna talk about workforce development. So, no specific dirt today, but we'll see plenty tomorrow. Today is really just about talking, educating people on what the heck we're doing and how to go inspire the next generation. Can you grab the clicker for me? I don't have a ton of time this morning, so I'm not gonna talk too much about BuildWit, what the heck we do. I like to walk around, so I'm gonna walk around here. So, workforce development. We're gonna talk about a case study, Turner Mining Group. Now, I, this isn't to say what Turner Mining Group is doing today. I'm not involved in this company at all anymore. I started the company four years ago, and Turner Mining Group was one of the first companies I was working with. They were an upstart mining company at the time. I was an upstart marketing business. We came together and we said, hey, you need people. I know how to talk to the next generation. Let's go about this together. So Turner Mining Group, how did they generate thousands of applications? Because over that first year, they had no workforce problem. They're a mining company, just like a lot of you in this room, uh, but they had the next generation knocking at their door by the thousands to go to work for them. How the heck did they do that? And again, it's not about where they are today. We're just gonna talk about what are these basic principles that they applied to their business to go inspire the next generation very, very effectively. Very effectively. So that goes into, all right, so what did they do and then what steps can you take at your business today? It doesn't require a lot of money. It doesn't require a lot of time. What can you do today to start inspiring the next generation solving this workforce problem? Because I don't know about you guys, but we talk a lot about workforce development. It's been the same conversation for years and years and years now. I'm young, but I've been in the industry for about 10 years. I started my company four years ago. It's the same conversation today that it was four years ago when I started, but it's even worse now. There's even more urgency. So let's go do something about it because I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of having the same conversation. I wanna get this solved so we can go do other cool stuff as an industry and keep supporting America like we do. Um, so the people problem, let's just talk about the problem for a sec. Uh, this, it spans across the entire industry. So it's not just a Pennsylvania thing, it's across the entirety of the industry. I travel to about 40 states a year. I've been to quite a few countries this year, probably 30 states this year alone. It's across the board right now. This industry is saying, we don't have enough people and we have no idea what to do. So it's not just you guys, it is everybody. It's the entire industry. Everything starts with people. So there's a lot of other things in this industry like your reserves, like your equipment, like your history, but none of that matters if you can't effectively staff your companies. All of your companies, no matter what you do, whether it's ready mix, whether it's aggregate, whether it's construction, whatever it is, it all starts with people. If we don't figure this out, we're screwed. We need to figure this out. And this is to just note that we're a competitive industry. Everybody's always bidding against each other and, and we're big egos and this and that. But just understand that we're all on the same team here. We're competing with all these other industries that need people. Everybody needs people, not just our industry, everybody. We're competing with them, we're not competing amongst each other. If someone gets into mining, if someone gets into aggregate, if someone gets into construction, that's a win for everybody in this room. We need to start thinking like a team. If we don't think like a team, we're not gonna be able to knock this problem out together. All the other industries, they're kicking our asses right now because they're thinking like a team. We're not, we're a fragmented industry. 
We need to start coming together and saying, hey, how can I help you guys out? How can you help me out? How can I go help the other guys that I've never talked to? We need to help each other out here or else we're not going to win. Um, raising wages. So in these guys, they just presented, did they talk about, well, your solution to your problem is just raising wages. So just go out and do that and your problem solved. No, raising wages, temporary solution. Okay, great. We're raising wages. That's fantastic. Good. More money, but inflation's record high. Everything's more expensive. We're basically just keeping track with everybody else. That's never going to get the next generation to say, wow, I need to go work in mining. I need to go work in aggregate. I need to go work in ready mix. That's a temporary solution. We need to go deeper than that. So I hear a lot of talk about raising wages. That's fantastic, but just know that's a temporary problem. That's not what's going to inspire the next generation. I promise you, it's not. So, and this is about our businesses. We want our businesses to be more successful, but it's deeper than that. We can't fail because this is an essential industry. These guys just talked about it. Our communities, our future generations depend on us to figure this out. So we don't have a choice but to figure this out for the sake of our businesses, but most of you probably have kids. Your kids have no potential of a promising future without this industry, without aggregate, without infrastructure. And so what are we gonna do? We're just gonna throw our hands up and say, yeah, we couldn't figure this people problem out. That's not an option for the sake of society, for the sake of future generations, for the sake of your guys' children. It's a big deal. This is way deeper than just our businesses, our people. This is about the entire future of society that we're dealing with. And that sounds crazy, but that's really what the aggregate industry does. That's what concrete does. We're the foundation of everything, everything. That's a big deal. And just know that no one's coming to save us. No one. So we're supporting the entirety of society, but we gotta save ourselves here. This is our problem to solve. We gotta take extreme ownership and say, hey, all right, we gotta do things differently. We gotta figure this one out together here. And if we don't do that again, then what? So to get into the case study, what did they do, again, what did they do the first year to go out and from like, st it's statistics, you know, it's, it's mathematically proven they got thousands of job applications from young people who had no problem recruiting that first year of business. They didn't exist. This upstart mining company comes about and attracts the next generation when no one else can figure it out. How the heck did they do that? Well, first, they had a clearly defined higher purpose. Why should I come to work for you? Okay, great, pay, benefits, so on and so forth. That's great, but everybody else has that too. What's that why? What's that why? And is it clearly defined? We just talked about it. We're the foundation of society. That's enormous. But are you talking about that? Do, does everybody at your business know why the heck they show up to work every day? And if they don't, you need to define that. You need to articulate that over and over and over and over again. So it becomes more than just a job. When I went to work for these guys, it wasn't just a job. I knew why I was going to make the, the mining industry better. That's exciting to me as a 27 year old. That's exciting. They leverage social media to reach a national audience. So if we just keep recruiting from the same pools that we've been recruiting from that aren't working right now, we're just gonna keep getting the same results. We're not gonna go out and get people beyond what we're finding right now, which is not adequate. We need to go beyond that. Well, we have this amazing tool called social media that we can use to leverage, not just reaching our traditional audience, but reach across the entire country. So they leverage social media to tell their story consistently to go attract the next generation, not only in their community, but across the entire country. And it was important to note that Keaton Turner, who started the company, he led the charge. It starts at the top. They created an entry point with no prior experience. I see so many hiring ads now. Oh, we need an experienced blade hand, an experienced loader operator. Those people already have jobs. We need to go create a new generation. By definition, those people are not gonna have experience. We're delusional to think we can just keep hiring experienced people. That's crazy. And most of you, I talk to you guys, you'd probably rather someone not have experience because then you can train them up as you want them. And then they become even more effective than the people that might have 10, 15, 20 years experience because you have to untrain those people. So they created a defined entry point 
And they educated people about that. And that was haul truck driver for their mining company. Most of you guys probably have that entry point within your business, but do people know about it? Because if they don't, that's a missed opportunity. So if we're talking about inspiring the next generation, creating a new workforce, we need defined entry points into mining. Why does everybody go to college? Humans are wired to seek the path of least resistance. College is easy. Society tells me to go to college. My parents tell me to go to college. They tell me where to apply to college. They tell me how to go get hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, where to live, what classes to take. It's easy. If a kid wants to get into mining right now, I don't know, good luck. Well, no wonder we have a workforce problem. No wonder we're getting our asses kicked by higher education. It's obvious. They have an easy to find path. We don't, and that's on us to solve. They heavily invested in recruitment. Make HR strategic. How much do you guys spend on equipment maintenance? Equipment is very important to all of your guys' operations, so you spend accordingly. You have a lot of people dedicated to maintaining your equipment, growing your fleet. How many people do you have dedicated to growing your workforce? But that's our biggest problem, and yet we're not investing anything there? That's crazy. So how can we invest in growing our workforce? Do we have a full-time recruiter? Does our HR, is our HR VP involved in the board meetings, right there with all the other executives making the big decisions? Because if not, we need to think differently about this. Traditionally in mining, traditionally aggregate, HR is just compliance, nothing more than that. And yet our biggest problem is workforce development of people. So we need to be more serious about investing in people investing in recruiting the next generation, investing in taking care of our people. They heavily invested in marketing and storytelling. Both of these guys just talked about it again. It's kind of nice you guys went first because you're just really helping me reinforce the, some of the points here. They, 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 they talked about what they were doing. So again, we're, we're, we're talking about inspiring the next generation and yet no one knows we exist. So how are we going to expect the next generation to come to work for us? They don't know we exist. That's crazy. We've hidden under our rocks, no pun intended, and, and we've just, hey, we're just gonna do our thing, you guys do your thing, we don't wanna be messed with, but now as a result, no one knows we exist. And that's a problem. So we need to talk about it. They invested in, in storytelling, and you have to reframe your thinking. It's not about sales. I know you guys are selling a lot of concrete, a lot of rocks right now, Business is good. Marketing is not about sales. It's about inspiring people. It's about telling stories. It starts with your current workforce. If your current workforce, again, is reminded daily why they show up to work, what difference they make every day, that's a big win. If they're appreciated every day, that's a big win. If their families are seeing what their spouses and, and parents do every day, that's a big win. It starts with inside the industry. It's not about sales. Storytelling is powerful though. And if you're not doing it, you're leaving a lot on the table. So they invested in marketing and storytelling. So what can you do out of this? And th again, this worked. I'm not talking about what I do for my business. I don't have a workforce problem. We have 100 people that work for us, 120 applications for every open position. But that's not, that's not, Making, making rocks, that's not making concrete. I'm talking about a mining company that did this. So what can you do? Define your unique higher purpose. Why does your business exist and how can you articulate that repeatedly to your people? Repetition does not spoil the prayer. If you walked into my office right now and asked anybody there, why are you here? Why do you work for Buildwood? They would tell you immediately to make the dirt world a better place. And that is because day one, we start talking about purpose and onboarding. Why are you guys here? And that's why most people apply to work for us because we talk about it very openly. Hey, we're here to go make the dirt world a better place. People are excited about that. Yeah, we have good pay. Yeah, we have good benefits. Yeah, it's a great career. There's great people. There's big equipment. All of that, that's fantastic. But people want to know, this next generation wants to know, why do I come to work for you? So define this and talk about it repeatedly because it is a really, really big deal. And it should be easy for everybody in this room because like we talked about, no one could live without us. It's a big deal. 
Invest in people recruiting and storytelling like you do production and equipment. I've seen the checks you guys write for equipment. I've seen the checks you guys write for plants, for technology, for everything. But then when it comes to people, there's almost no investment. It's crazy. It's crazy. Our biggest problem is workforce development, and yet we're not seriously investing in it. So who are we to expect anything different? We need to invest in it like we do our, the whole other part of our business if we're going to get anything different out of it. And it doesn't mean just money. It could just be time. It could just be just thought, just being a little bit more creative here. Because what we're doing is clearly not working. We need to go beyond what we've done up to this point. The world is different. And so we need to invest a little bit more money, a little bit more time, a little bit more thought into this problem. So how can you invest in this people problem? Tell your story consistently. If you're not using social media, we're talking about the next generation. Most of you probably have kids. Where are your kids every single day? They're on their phones. They're on their phones. That's how the whole next generation communicates. It's crazy. I employ just about 100 people because of social media. I'd have nothing without social media. It's an amazing tool. It's not this thing to waste time if you don't use it as such. If you apply it as a business tool, you can effectively communicate your work for, with your workforce a lot more effectively. You can, you can go talk to your commun communities more effectively. You can go talk to the next generation more effectively. So if you're not utilizing social media to tell your story consistently, you're leaving a lot on the table. And it has to be consistent. It has to be every day, or at least once a week. It can't just be, wow, we made a post this year. All right, good, we checked the social media box. The next generation is gonna be knocking on our door. It's not how it works. And again, we all need to be doing this. And it's not that, it shouldn't be that hard. What we do is really cool. We got big equipment, we got explosives, we got concrete, we've got some really cool stuff. It's not very hard to talk about, but we need to talk about it. We need to talk about it. And create defined entry points into your organizations. Create defined entry points. So, okay, you could say, yeah, we do have an entry point. Mixer driver, haul truck driver, whatever that entry point is, laborer. But do people know about it? Do you educate people about that opportunity? Can I go to your website and, hey, I want to go to work for this company. How do I start out? Can I go onto your website and effectively figure out what that entry point is and how I could get from there to maybe a manager? And if I can't, that's probably, that's a problem. Because me as the next generation, okay, great, I find you on social media. I wanna to go to work for you. Where am I gonna go learn about you? Because there's, I have a lot of options right now. I'm gonna to go to your website. If I don't find the information on your website that I need, I'm gonna go elsewhere. So you need to cre create the defined entry point and you need to educate people about that defined entry point. Again, we're talking about workforce development creating a new workforce. By definition, these people are not experienced, so we need to bring them in through entry points. What are you doing at your company to help create that entry point? Help create that next generation, because it needs to be all of us if we're gonna be successful at this. So, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, social media can be intimidating because there's, there's a lot of different platforms and what do we do and oh, there's liability and safety concerns and there's, there's a lot of reasons to not do it. And I've heard all the reasons and, and they're all legitimate reasons. It's, I can't argue with, yeah, uh, sure, Mshaw, yeah, sure, someone might go hire that guy. Yeah, sure, it might, the pit not, might not be looking as pretty as it should. I, I get all of that, I understand that. This is all we do, we just work in the dirt world. So I just tour mines and tunnels and demolition projects full time right now. Um, so I, I understand this world, I understand what you guys are facing, I understand the anxiety, but it's, it's just the biggest thing is just to get started somewhere. Someone in this room, Rod Martin in the back, I've been watching his stuff for a long time now. Go follow Rod on LinkedIn and see what he posts. He just does, he just talks about what the heck's going on at the quarry. You know, what's going on at the quarry? Who are your people? Highlight your people. Hey, you just got a new piece of equipment. Cool. Hey, this customer just landed this big job. Awesome. Like, just start somewhere and, and leverage your existing resources. You might not understand social media. That doesn't make it not important, but you probably have a lot of other people within your business that do understand social media. 
I was this young guy uh, working in construction out of college and I was begging the company I was working for, like, let me help with social media, let me help, let me help. And they're just like, uh -uh, nope, no thank you, because they wanted to control it all. You can still set guidelines, you can still control it, you can still make sure everything's safe, everything's looking good, but leverage someone else within your business that's excited to talk about your business and allow them to talk about it. Um, it within business, I think if you wanna just talk about your business overall, LinkedIn is a fantastic platform. Like that's the one I see Rod on all the time. Um, if you wanna go hire the next generation, you probably wanna to go to Instagram or TikTok. But again, leverage the people within your business. You probably have young people within your business that are gonna be really excited to start telling stories. And you can still approve everything. You can still make sure they're running it by the proper channels, but leverage the people you already have because I guarantee you all of you already have people within your businesses that would be more than happy to tell stories about what they do every day. You don't have to go hire an agency like me. I don't wanna do social media for the companies we work with. That's how I started the company, doing social media. I started doing Turner Mining Group social media. Then it grew to a point where I don't wanna do people's social media because it's doing you guys a disservice. I want you guys to do your own social media because you can tell your story way more effectively than I can tell your story. It doesn't have to be amazing photographs. It doesn't have to be amazing quality video. You just have to start somewhere. So that's my recommendation is just start somewhere. Talk about what's going on at the pit. Talk about a great individual. Highlight a mixer truck driver who's just an absolute stud. Or hey, we went to talk to this classroom you know, this week. Or hey, we got this new piece of equipment. Or hey, we have this customer who's just been an awesome customer for 30 years and we just wanna talk about it. It doesn't have to be a bunch of chest beating. It can be really genuine. Just talk about what you're doing. But again, it's gonna take us all talking about what we're doing to get the next generation to notice that we even exist. We have a lot of work to do, a lot of ground to make up. And it's not gonna happen without everybody marching in the same direction. Aaron, question. How does your company build the dirt world? You have, going from, you have gone from 20 people to 9,500 people. What do you do for the industry and, and how do you help companies achieve that goal? Um, we started with just storytelling. So I just, I quit my job one day, bought a camera and started running around the country just asking people, hey, can I come out and see your quarry? Hey, can I come out and see your job? Most people would tell me, yeah, get the hell out of here. But every once in a while they'd say, yeah, sure, come on out. I'd come on out, take pictures, post them on social media, show people about the industry, and then ended up with a marketing business as a result. I don't, I didn't want a marketing business. I have an engineering degree. I wanted to be a contractor. Um, my dad's a lawyer, so I have no business being in this world whatsoever. I'm just a kid that loves tractors. So have a marketing business, and now we're getting into training and development as well. So we, we've just, uh, we took on some investment from a cat dealer last year and became a uh, software company doing training software for the heavy construction world. Not just the software, but also producing all of the courses since we have access to the sites. We have the ability to tell stories very effectively. So that's kind of the next. Are you going to be a Con Expo, Con Ag? Well, yeah, yeah, we will be. So, but, but to answer your question, we just tell stories. I reach millions of people every single week through social media. It's crazy. I'm just this 27 year old idiot, but reach millions of people every single week because I post pictures about the dirt world, about what you guys do every single day online and people love it. People love it. People love seeing what we do. So that's why this shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be difficult. It shouldn't be a chore. It should be fun to talk about what we do. Because I know everybody in this room loves, you guys probably love what you do. You wouldn't want to do anything else. So let's, let's share that passion. Let's share that joy of, about what we do with, with the next generation. On itself. Yep. Yep. So, so. Dan can tell you his story. So Dan is, hey Dan. Dan is probably the youngest <laughs> Just, the hello, vice Dan. president. Hello. In any of our member companies, very cool. Of this association, oh, yeah. very cool. Twenty-seven now. Uh, Twenty-nine now. Yeah. Dang. I showing hard my age here. You know, yeah. I hired you at 20, twenty-two. Twenty-two is yeah. my vice president of company. Is that right? Huh. Yeah. Holy smokes! Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's learning how to run a fifteen million dollar company at the, at the age, before he was even. I, I don't, honestly, he, he I love barely, your ambition. He can, barely, you know? he can barely grow facial hair. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. that's the best I got. This is, this is the best I got. It's I, pretty I, bad. I, I feel you, man, because yeah. when I shave, they're like, oh, come on, you got to let something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I, I love the ambition of everybody up here. But Aaron, I, I definitely relate to you being a you know, younger sure. guy in the industry myself. 
you know, everything you said, that's a lot of what we've pushed and preached. You know, it, it's great because, uh, you know, Chris has got the experience. He's got the direction. He shared it with me, you know, so I'm yeah. able to take it and push it. Now, you do significantly better with the social media thing. I, I'm lost with that. But, you know, hey. when it comes to, you know, overall, we're trying that on a small scale. You have a great point, you know, as a collective, everybody here across the nation, you know, this is a team effort. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it has to be. Yeah. That's You're a, spot on with it. But we, we're not the chest thumpers. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, Dan and I go, we use a phrase, I'd rather create the culture of excellence sure. right. than be that chest thumper say, hey, look at me. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, no, no, nobody likes that. No, guy, but, right? but, but there's, that you don't guy. have to do that. You know, no. you, yeah. you, you can, you just talk, just be genuine, talk about your people, talk exactly. about your customers, yeah. talk about the community. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Talk about the entry point. I was actually telling Gary this morning, we've had uh, now three, two different cases that worked out. A third one we were looking to work out, but she had something come up. But uh, we've taken bus drivers and trained them how to be concrete. Uh, that's, yeah. that's cool. I, that's I mean, cool. it's yeah, it's an odd market when it comes to employees. You yeah. know? And we find the same thing. We're in a, a big trucking hub. And, uh, you know, the reality is we're not paying the most in our area. We, we can't afford to, to be honest. Sure. You know, the, the trucking industry, logistics right now, they're, they're yeah. hurting, you know, so they can throw some big dollars out there. Yeah. Uh, but we, we push the same thing. You know, it, it's I, I thought you guys all touched on this in, in different aspects, but, you know, it is a temporary solution. You know, of course, money makes somebody happy for a little while, you know, mm -hmm. and then it's gone. Well, it, it, it's, uh, I'm a big fan of Abraham Maslow mm -hmm. back in the day. Hierarchy of needs. Hierarchy of needs. So at the, yes, at the bottom, exactly. you have physiological, yeah. but you can look at it from an employment standpoint. Yeah. So at the bottom, you have 401k, pay, yes. health care for my family. Yeah. But then, oh, okay. You gotta be yeah, yeah. Boss. But great. You, now, now I'm up, up to that next level. And I, now I'm asking Maslow, why. Very, yeah. Very yeah. 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 And so yeah, it's, you can apply the same hierarchy yes, to employment. We, we yeah. probably, but very similar to you. My background's not business, it's engineering. Yeah. Study my engineering at WVU. Oh, and, cool. Uh, you know, when it comes to it, uh, I, we take a very static approach in that regard because, uh, you know, I always joke an engineer is trained to answer the question why at least five times. Yeah. You know, yeah. so until he, until he that, that's me. what yeah, I'll yeah. ask. I'll ask why 20 times until, <laughs> yeah. I, until I drill it down to the point. No, why? Uh -huh. Why? Because yeah. yeah. what's happened is we get comfortable with standard answers. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. To me, the standard answer is the excuse. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking away. I'm looking for ways to take the excuses away from people. Yeah. Right. Well, but and, and, and so I'll ask a lot. To the point <coughs> he gets he visibly gets frustrated with me. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm not well, trying to frustrate you. Like, you know, I'm, come on, man. I gave you the answer. Well, but, but <laughs> to all this, we need to ask. Yeah. We need to ask. Why do we have a workforce problem? Why do we have a workforce problem? Why? 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 Mm -hmm. And get to those exactly. core reasons, and then sit there and say, okay, great. Now this is our. And responsibility to yes. figure this out yeah and and, yeah. and that's what the, the like the industry is not they're just like oh, they're kind of scratching their heads like oh, I, and they're not really asking Honestly, why. That's why as a state organization our workforce development committee really came out of a, a pellet class for emerging leaders and the young leaders uh, that that's mm -hmm. where the big push came from because the few younger, you know, in our organization saw immediately the problem. I think in a lot of ways, it's because we know we're inheriting it. You know, I mean, that's it. Th nothing against any of the other generation here. Their experience is invaluable, <clears throat> but they know that, you know, in 10, 20 years, yep. they're out, not my problem. You know, I mean, I'm not saying everybody I've, thinks that way. I reckon that to watch oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's, there's a lot of troublemakers in this one at Con Expo as well. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, yeah, I'll be out there. We'll have a full contingent out there. And good and uh, Dave, Dave Semple is our president of our building materials group. Oh, good. Yeah, so he's, super. Uh, he's been he's new to the industry. Uh, he's been with us about a year. So very cool. And we're dealing with the same challenges and have a lot of the same thoughts. And, yeah. and uh, we're a pretty large family business, so we have some capabilities in terms of marketing and things like that. But sure. I want to, you know, like the we did hire a full time recruiter this year. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really good news. Yeah, but your your stories are your stories great. Yeah, and, and our son, uh, my son, came into the business. And we started yeah. a lot of social media because he understands it. Yeah, and yeah. He, wow. he, he went to school for business. Next thing you know, he has drones. He's doing he's taking pictures. He, yeah. he loves to go out and do this. Yeah. He, Put posts together for us. That's so on, the, on the back. There you go. My, on the back of my card is our, our building material companies. <laughs> the whole 
the company's called Stuart Company. So you'll uh, okay. just take a look at it. Yeah, I'll, and I'll reach out to you guys. And I mean, just give me a shot anytime. any time. Um, and I'm happy to just shoot the pooper. Yeah. Um, I'm in Nashville, okay. but I travel every week. Yep. Yep. So it's... Okay. Yeah, it's a terrible place to visit. So. Yeah. <laughs> I love going there. <laughs> that's, <laughs> why, that's why I got there, because it's not very hard to get, get people yeah. in there. It's and, how it's growing. Yeah. Yeah. Great presentation. Thank you so much. As a uh, previous English learning coordinator, I knew it was all about the story, but thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice meeting you. Great to meet you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'm not too far either. All right, Abigo. Great job, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks, yeah. Mark. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I have our plan. We're going to the Stephenville Crab Shack. <laughs> Go right through Baltimore. Okay, so. Ah. Alright, so we just spoke to Paca. Uh, well, I just spoke to Paca. Chase did not speak, but he was in attendance. He said it was great. Was it great? Yeah, it was alright. <laughs> it was alright. So I, I agree with his uh, assessment. So we're gonna get in the car and we're gonna head north. We're gonna stop for some crab cakes because I, I just, all I want right now is a crab cake. Get a crab cake or two and then head up towards Harrisburg. We might go over to Reading Anthracite today, depending on if it's gonna work. I'm waiting on a text or phone call to determine if that's gonna be a thing. Uh, if not, we'll just kick it in Harrisburg tonight, and then we're going to see Mushlets and Reading Anthracite tomorrow. So either way, we'll be seeing a lot of dirt tomorrow. Today, TBD, if you're watching this, you probably already know if we saw some or not, thanks to maybe the thumbnail or maybe the title or whatever I don't it is. Think any of this is thumbnail worthy, so we gotta. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> nothing we've already seen. Well, the the uh, hallway vacuum is them thumbnail. Oh, true. Yeah. Not a very thumbnail worthy morning, so if the thumbnail of this video was a 60-20 hogging or something like that, there's a 60-20 coming up here in this video. And if not, that's all we got. I mean, that's- That is all we got. That's, all, that's we got. all we got. So, yeah. well, I don't know. Uh, we have the crab cakes. If nothing else, stay tuned for some crab cakes. Crab cakes.